Are you stupid or something? You probably are, and buddy, that's all right. You're in the right place to learn some stuff, so stick around and you just might. My name is not me, and I'll be asking some cues, and at the end you'll be riddled with A's. You might score real high, but even if not, you'll sure be glad you played. If you're looking for prizes, just move along, there's no money for you to earn. You win by trying and doing your best, your prize is the stuff you learn. If you want to be an artist, you have to know all you can about the world of art. So engage with this quiz and at the end you'll say, I am smart. I am not me. I am art. Ooh, slow fade. And I am your host for I Am Smart, the quiz where people look to improve their art, their lives, and their selves through learning and earn the right to say, yeah, baby, I am smart. The format of the quiz, very simple, very straightforward. Three rounds of questions for your brain, three musings, that looks like an M, for your imaginosphere in a two-point bonus round at the end. You've got 20 points overall, that's our max. That's our max. What are you going to need for this quiz? Something to write with? Like a pen or something. That's just a red biro there. That's an example. That's an example for you. Something to write on. Notepad. Something like that. A brain for thinking and an imaginosphere for imagining. Optional is a beverage, because whilst it's got absolutely nothing to do with the actual quiz, we do like to kick things off with a little itty bitty toast just uh just to just to get get things going get everybody in the same place yeah we people are tuning in from all around the world guys people are tuning in from all around the world all different time zones except for australia got to make sure that everybody feels you know everybody everybody's together yeah everybody's together today's toast courtesy of Instagram user Film Gem Digger, who we learned last week is our very own Killer Kilch. So here we go. To women, yeah? It is, as of two days ago, three days ago, Women's History Month. So we all must take a good hard look at the women in our lives. Most of them, great. Yeah, real nice, lovely stuff. Real good. But others let the side down somewhat. You know what I'm talking about. The callous way they treat people. The flimsy excuses they give for not honouring previously agreed upon dates. Even if it's just a lunch date. The reckless ways they use their own sensuality, e.g. when they're wearing clothes or eating food. Plus, I've been struck by at least four of them. Celebrating? So yes, let's celebrate women this month. Let's celebrate the women who deserve to be celebrated. And that is as far as I'm willing to go. To some women. Mm. One more. To Lucy, of course. Of course, my goodness. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Hello, smarties. Hello, my friends, let's all have a party that never, ever ends. Off the top of my head. How are we? Who is in the canoe today? TB Douglas, hello to you. SJ Beck, 72. Lovely to see you. MPF, the Funkster. How you doing, Funky? Evening, everybody. Appreciate that, Nana. Uh, Super Nash 8, hello to you. Definitely not Duda, hello to you. The returning Champagne. AOL Time Warner official, this quiz is about to be bussin'. Bussin' indeed. Let's just... <coughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, extremely good or extremely delicious. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be both. Extremely good and extremely delicious. T.B. Douglas, wow, sounds like a you problem, not me. Well, agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Lucy should have her own month. Could not agree more. Lucy History Month, where we, we talk about some of her greatest film accomplishments, some of her greatest artworks. I mean, she does paint, does stuff with the UN. That's history. 
Once, uh, didn't we look up once that she once uh, made love to a ghost? Or was made love to by a ghost? I mean, that's going to take a month to get, to really just drill down into the, the heart of that issue. What's that over there? What's that over there? Is that just the edge of the... No. It's fine. It's fine. I just won't draw attention to it. How are you? Obviously, as I said, the high point score last uh, last quiz two weeks ago was definitely not Duda. And uh, a, a fine, fine performance it was, which means that it definitely gets to choose one of the rounds this week. These are the rounds that we're dealing with, that we're contending with. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got a Yuzi choose. We've got an order. We've got an iconic art, a nart, an anagram, a ding dong, a yay or nay, a spotlight, a movie ladder, haikuez day, gimme five, not me wood, and song lyrics. Definitely at your leisure, please. When you uh, when you select one of these. What are we playing? What are we playing? I've got the rest of them here. Got the rest of them here, definitely. Movie Ladder, please. Definitely loves a movie ladder. Almost as much as some other people, I believe, Super Nash 1, 8, and SJ Beck 72, dislike it. But, should, uh, you know, if, if you get the high point score, then you get to choose something else. It's definitely not Movie Ladder. That's the way this works. Okay, let's get rid of the rounds. Definitely really does. And let's choose some more rounds, shall we? Yes, please. Oh my gosh. Just let this music fill your soul. Go. So there we go. We have got. Let's drag these up. Whew. It's quite. Whew. Does you know? Whew. What do we have? We've got movie ladder. Of course, we've got movie ladder. My goodness. My goodness, we've got movie ladder. RT spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get that in there. And then what was that other one? Iconic art. Of course. What a week. What an episode this is. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at some of these musings then. Let's have a look at some of these musings. Oh, that's quite good. It's quite simple, but it's good. And we've got iconic art. Oh, that's interesting. Then finish up with a ladder. Oh, <coughs> lordy lord, I'm not sure we can finish that one because that one could be quite. Oh, what an interesting trio. What an interesting, interesting trio. Let's finish there. Let's start there. Yep, okay, okay. Order in honour of one of the most uh, recent contestants to depart the traitors. Yes! Sir John Burkow on uh, on an American uh, reality TV show. What's the, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that? I was very surprised when I saw him. You can keep uh, backbench MPs in uh, in uh, in line. Can you keep American uh, reality TV stars in line? Apparently not. I'm intrigued by this trio, as well. You should be uh, AOL. Let's get the let's get the chat box back up. Actually, uh, it's, yeah, let's get rid of war. Uh, which means we are going to start off with your favorite of mine, mm, RT Spotlight. <laughs> Guys, game recognizes game. As an artist, you have to be willing to shine a light on the work of other artists and be nice about it. That way, if they want to be polite, they have to say nice stuff about your art. But before we look, of course, at who the spotlight falls upon in this quiz, we need to take a little trip to see 
your favorite of mine. The artiste who puts all other artistes to shame. The artiste who's really, really in honor, in honor of Women's History Month. One of the great women of not just her generation, but her eon. Is that is that too much to say? It is, of course, it is, of course, the wonderful Lucy Liu. How are you, Lucy? Oh, it's been a while, Lucy. It's been a while. How are you? Lucy's doing well. Lucy's doing well. Enjoying that fat paycheck that you got from Shazam, colon, Fury of the Gods, huh? Yeah. It, it would have been nice if it was received better. Yes. Yes. I heard a lot of people say it was perfectly serviceable. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was, it was some of the best work you've done in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Oh, definitely not due to straight in. Oh, AOL Time Warner official. Thank you so much for bringing up the spotlight stuff. <coughs> Completely forgot about that. And that is, mm, you're like a little, a little elf, AOL Time Warner official, if I can say that without it sounding pejorative. Like a little elf, like the elves and the shoemaker, just coming out and I'm just falling asleep and you're just, you're just making those shoes, making those brogues, making those winkle pickers. Yeah? Making a lovely, uh, a lovely pump. Making a lovely, lovely pump. Excellent. But definitely not do this. There's any jokes for us, Lucy? Any jokes for us? She says no. No jokes for Lucy. What? You want to? You want this to be a bit more earnest this time, Lucy? Yeah. Yeah. Lucy wants to be a bit more earnest. That's, well, that's. That's fine. That's fine. That's certainly fine. We had. We had some off-color humor uh last week in the uh art right now uh so we've, we've maybe had our fill of toilet humor um for now what, what do you want to talk about Lise? you want to give a shout out to dwayne johnson your co-star in the upcoming christmas film red one well isn't that nice what 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 are some of your favorite films of his lucy why don't you tell us that why don't you tell us that the film about the person pooping themselves in an elevator and then their friend notices their trousers are discolored and tells the whole elevator who did it. Do you remember do you know which one she's talking about? I don't remember I don't remember that film, Dwayne Johnson being in a film about that. What's it called? Snitch. Oh Lucy, that's that's not a that's not what that film's about. I believe it's about an informant of some kind. That's not very do you have any others? Okay. The film about the guy who can't poop in public because he makes loud, faintly erotic sounds as he defecates. What? What are you talking about? What's that one called? Mona. Mona. O M O A. It's pronounced Moana. Okay, so you've embarrassed yourself there, Lucy. That's a shame. That's a real shame, Lucy. Do you, you've got a third one? Oh, she's got a third one. Well, can we try and make this one an actual film that Dwayne Johnson has been in? Dwayne the Rock Johnson. My goodness. What have we got? What have we got? The horror film about how scary it is when you see some blood on your toilet paper post wipe? What? Surely, I don't think Dwayne Johnson's ever been in a horror film. Unless you consider certain parts of the Scorpion King or Doom. Horror film about how scary it is when you see some blood on your toilet paper post wipe. What's this one called? Red Notice. Well, th I, th I, th I thought we'd made some progress there, Lucy. I thought we'd made some progress and you were going to just say some nice things about Dwayne Johnson, which he needs at the moment because his confidence is absolutely rock bottom after a series of box office failures. But that's... Maybe he'll laugh. Maybe he'll laugh when he sees this. T.B. Douglas... Lucy, I was hoping for better. Yeah, I think we all were, Lucy. Just, you, you, you raise my hopes and then you just dash them on the rocks. Oh, Lucy, I can't stay angry at you. She's so fair. So fair. So fair. And the other cheek as well. There we go. And rubbing her hair. There we go. Well, thank you anyway, Lucy. It's it's always lovely to see you, if not necessarily lovely to hear the disgusting, foul words that are coming out of your mouth. Everybody say bye, Lucy. Everybody say bye, Lucy, please. Oh, Lucy. This is definitely not due to... Absolutely. Oh, Lucy. Everybody say bye, Lucy. 
she's not going to go until somebody says goodbye. I will sit here for the whole hour. There we go. Thank you, Nana. There we go. Lovely, lovely stuff. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Lucy. Of course, the spotlight isn't on Lucy. Thank you, SGFX72. Thank you. Thank you, Funkster and TB. Lovely, lovely stuff. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, of course, the spotlight isn't falling on uh, Lucy. This, I mean, it, it's always on Lucy in some ways. Um, she is the, the sun around which the entertainment world orbits. But instead, we're focusing on another young lady. It is Women's History Month after all. It's a young lady with a boy's name. It's Billie Eilish. Looks very warm there, doesn't she? Looks very warm. Um, but at the same time, with the facial expression, very cold. Um, an interesting dichotomy. She's a wonderful f songwriter. Um, so let's test how much we know about Billie Eilish. And that took quite a while. It's 1622. Let's get on with our day. Question number one. Billie Eilish writes songs with her brother. What is his first name? Absolutely no cap, AOL Time Warner official. No cap whatsoever. And sometimes she does wear them. Not today. Billie Eilish writes songs with her brother. What is his name? Uh, question number two. From February 2019 to March 2021, Billie Eilish had a very particular hair colour. What colour was it? And I will say, for those of you who are kind of unsure about the... Uh, time period here this is when she first kind of burst into uh, mainstream attention so when your first image of Billie Eilish was more than likely with a very particular hair color what hair color was it what's that you want the picture again just in case it gives you a clue give it a shot if you thought if you want it's me it's up to you Ad break. We'll snooze that. We'll snooze that ad break, I think. I don't think we should be doing an ad break. Ads are snooze for five minutes. Okay, that's good. That's good. How particular do we need a brand name? We do not need a brand name. Just a just a general a general chromal name. You know? One of the big dozen colours, I would say. Um, if I asked you to name a colour, it'd probably be in the first Maybe even first half does. But that depends on how uh, how you rank your colours. It's up to you. Question number three. Billie Eilish's first number one knocked Lil Nas X from the top of the US Billboard chart after a long time. Lil Nas X. What was the song called? Now, this is Billie Eilish's song, not Lil Nas X. <coughs> Again, her first big burst onto the scene kind of... Uh, kind of song name. Billie Eilish's first number one locked, knocked Lil Nas X from the top of the US Billboard chart. Do you know what? I'm going to open this up. I'm going to make this a little bit more user-friendly. Give me the name of either song. Either of these songs. Both biggins. Both biggins. These questions are not for old people. Hashtag null points. Well, then you'll get to learn a little bit, won't you, Maple Panda? And then the next time you're conversing with a young person, you'll be able to say, gosh, gosh, how about that Billie Eilish and her brother? Wasn't it crazy that her hair color was... I, I personally really like her first number one, which is called A Knock Lil Nas X with his song Off the Charts. Question number four. In earning a number one, Billie Eilish became the first person born in the 20th century, uh, 21st century to achieve the honour. What year was she born? What year was Billie Eilish born? And it was in the 21st century. Oh, the hashtag needed a Eurovision French accent, please. Okay, okay. I, I, I want this to be known by all uh, casting directors. I can certainly take direction. Here we go. These questions are not for old people. Hashtag, un nul point. Un nul point. Les États-Unis, nul point. Hey, look at me standing in front of the Eiffel Tower so you know I am French. Thanks so much. Grateful. You're welks. <clears throat> and final question. Which James Bond film did Billie Eilish write and perform a song for? That's what, That one's a little bit more old people friendly, right? Mm. 
Right. Right. Yeah, right. If you need any of those questions again, please do let me know. Oh, please do let me know. But until you do, we're going to get on with the musing. Of course, we need a musing for every single round that we have this week. And the musing for Billy Billy Eilish. Silly Billy Eilish is one of one of Billy's middle names is Pirate, which is both excellent and bonkers. What's your dream doesn't necessarily have to be an actual name middle name. One of her middle names is Pirate. Let's let's For those of you interested. Billy Eilish Pirate Baird O'Connell. Born in Los Angeles, California on December 18th, 2000. And Billy Eilish Pirate Baird O'Connell. But what, what's, what would you choose as a middle name that's not necessarily a name? That would just be, my God, such a conversation starter. Hi, what's your middle name? Intensity. Ooh. Pretty cool. Could be. It's up to you. You don't necessarily have to give your full name, but I'll... And obviously you guys don't know my full name. I've, uh, I've enjoyed keeping that kind of level of anonymity, but I might, I might decide um, a name to give... Um, to discuss and uh, elaborate and explore the concept of these uh, middle names that you're suggesting. And that's the end of the round. Let's head back to Maine. Let's head back to Maine. And yeah, let's start that ad. Let's just do a little quick advert. Yeah. Let's run it. Guys, what I'm going to do is something that I haven't done in quite some time. I'm going to take this off because bizarrely enough, bizarrely enough, in New Jersey today, after a week of, I mean, well, after several months of real coldness, today it's a high of 17 degrees C. Stay with me. Which is 62.6 Fahrenheit. It is warm. So not only is it too warm for me to be wearing this jacket, if you'll excuse me here, if you'll excuse me, trigger warning for some faintly erotic content here. I'm wearing shorts. Shorts. What's going on? Oh, is it now warm? Is it now spring? No. Back to rubbish the rest of the week. Back to rubbish the rest of the week. It, it does, it, it has been lovely. I took a lovely, lovely walk. Um down to a shopping center with the boys, bought some jeans. It's a lovely temperature, it is nice, but it's just like, pow, just out of nowhere. Just walking along, hey, how you doing? Whoa, what the heck was that, nature? But that's, that's, that's why we love Mother Nature, you know? She keeps it, uh, keeps it fresh, keeps us guessing. Mm. Done with the ad break? We're done with the ad break. Let's get on with our second round, which was definitely his choice. If you don't enjoy this, blame definitely. But don't be surprised if you get a middle finger for your troubles. Definitely is punk. <laughs> movie ladder, guys. Movie, movie ladder. All actors are connected. All actors are connected. Very simply, that is true. They have all met each other at award shows. They have all been in things with each other. They've all supported Israel together, okay? This tests that so that you know who is who. Yeah, this is a beneficial quiz round for all of you. Nice and simple. Let's see what we've got. Is it that? It is that. It is that. Let's see the ladder, guys. Let's see the ladder. Let's see what we're dealing with today. Oh, baby. Oppenheimer, number one. 
Then we've got Inception, number two. Uh, then we've got Wolf of Wall Street, Barbie, Anchorman 2, and Indiana Jones 4. I know that this isn't actually called Indiana Jones 4. It's Indiana Jones colon the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But that's not fitting in here. That is not fitting in. That would go behind me and not be beneficial to anybody. So I simplified it for the purposes of visuality. Yeah? So all I need you to give me is an actor that was in both Oppenheimer and Inception. An actor <coughs> that was in both Inception and Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street, Barbie, Barbie, and Anchorman 2. Anchorman 2 and Indiana Jones 4. Yeah? AOL Time Warner, too busy cobbling shoes to get it in the chat. Well, that's absolutely fine, AOL Time Warner official. I appreciate your work on the shoes. And you know what? There's a, there's one more opportunity. There's one more opportunity for you to uh, get it in there. Also, if you're interested in some crock points, and my God, I know it's a great incentive for all of you. You enjoy it very much. Who can tell me what links, you know I like to have my little links, what links Oppenheimer with Indiana Jones 4? What's the link there? If it, just, for, just for little crock points, just for little crock points. They're not going to give you anything else for the quiz, but if, the, if what is, what's, what's the crock point here? Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels good. I should come up with some music here. Should come up with some music here. Hmm. Yeah, I should. Maybe one day I will. I'm looking at this, and obviously, you know, I've, I've, I write these quite far in advance sometimes because you've got to write them, and then it's just whether it comes up. But Oppenheimer and Inception. As they are both Christopher Nolan films, it seems pretty risky, I will say. It's, are there other people that are, that are in both, other than the person that I'm thinking of? Wow, they're not. Gosh, I have really picked some wonderful stuff here. I mean, lots of crew, lots of crew. Steve DeCastro, the stunt, the stunt man. He was definitely in both. Jamie Hess in the makeup department of both. Christopher Flick in the sound department. Costas Theodosiu, editorial department of visual effects and additional crew. But no actors. Oh, I've done well there. I've done well. I hate to be this proud, but... Another couple of moments of that. Another couple of moments of that. And we'll see how well you do. This one could be tricky. I don't know. I don't know. Well done you, says Nana Hobbub. Thank done you for that. Lovely, lovely stuff. And there we go. The musing for this one. Nice and simple. Well, for, for those of you who... You didn't get the crock points, so I'm going to give the crock points to myself. There we go, some crock points for myself. Uh, is they're both to do with atomic bombs. Oppenheimer, an atomic bomb goes off. Indiana Jones 4, an atomic bomb goes off. Oppenheimer, they have to stand really far away to survive. Indiana Jones 4 just gets in a fridge freezer. So, um, just, just good advice. Just good advice. And so, on that theme... What would have been a more creative and fun thing for the USA to drop on Japan in order to end their participation in World War Two? I'll ask that again. What would have been a more creative and fun thing for the USA to drop on Japan in order to end their participation in World War Two? We're looking to rewrite history here, guys, by being a little bit more creative, yeah, than President Truman at the time. You just wanted to blow stuff up. And that's, you know, it can be fun. Oppenheimer showed us that. But I think if we put, if we put our minds to it, I think, this, 
I think the smarties, you smarties, can come up with some extra stuff that you could have dropped on Japan to just calm everything down. Yeah, just quell all of that ill feeling. Classic indie, says Nana. Absolutely. Absolutely classic indie. Swinging on vines, being afraid of snakes, and surviving A-bombs. Pretty darn tricky, says uh, the Funkster. Yeah, sometimes it can be tricky. Sometimes it can be tricky. But my hope is that the, all of the actors are you know, big enough and all of the films are big enough that when, when the answers are revealed, there's that wonderful, oh, God, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Why didn't I? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm hoping for. It's either knew it or <laughs> yeah, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. And there we go. That's the second round done. That's the second round done, guys. <coughs> I want to ask you something, guys. I want to ask you something nice and uh, nice and quick. Let's run a quick ad here. How are you all doing? I ran a uh, as I as as I am wont to do. I ran a toast um, subject request video on Friday. It's my Friday tradition now. I enjoy doing it, asking you guys on Instagram um, what I should be toasting. Uh, but Killer was the only person to respond this week, which left me with the conclusion everybody else is depressed. So I just want to make sure, how are you all doing? Yeah? How's it all going with you guys? Yeah, any big issues? Anything I can help solve? No problem too big, no problem too small, yeah? If it matters to you, it matters to me. That's what it means to be a smarty, yeah? That's what it means to be a fan of not me. Oh, TB, let's see. Let's see what TB says. Whoops, I meant to respond. I was trying to think of something good. No, no, no. You don't need to think of something good. You just need to think of something that matters to you, TB. So please, if the more you second guess it, the more you're going to get in your head. Yeah, the more you're going to get in your head, you're going to start, start questioning things. And, mm, is this... The, no, 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 no. Less of this, yeah? More of that. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So this Friday... When it comes up saying, hey, what do you want toasted? Don't think, just do, yeah? Honestly, some of the best things I've ever done, I cannot stress to you how little I was thinking. Uh, definitely not do that. Not great, but this is helping. I appreciate you. Definitely, if I can just bring a little, a little smile to the face, a little, a little chill vibes at the weekend, my gosh, there's no nobler cause that I can have. Final round, guys, and it's one that I've been looking forward to for a while. I'm not going to lie to you. Iconic art, guys. We live in a visual world. Yeah? Images have meaning. Thank you very much, Air Well Time Warner Official. Very prompt and impressive. If you see a picture of an ear of wheat on a packet, you know that thing is healthy, yeah? It's healthy toilet paper, yeah? You can eat that all day long and not put on an ounce. In Iconic Art, I'm going to show you five works of visual art. You just need to tell me what they are. Now, in this, in this round of Iconic Art, it is one of the Iconic Arts where I have created something. Is this topic? Have I got something topic here? No, it's not 500% movie posters. That is a lie. That is an absolute lie. What this is are... What do I even call these? Visual... Did I give them a name on the spreadsheet? Uh, visual... Visual names? We can come up with a better name. Vis, vis, mm, uh, I can't... Mm, 
basically what I've done is I've taken five actors and I've broken their names down into images and then I've drawn those images so if you can identify what the images are you will be able to a very reductive way of say, would be to say that I've copied the popular UK, possibly US, game show catchphrase. But this is very much a say what you see type situation. Okay, it'll be a lot more, it'll be a lot clearer once we get into it. Okay, so here's number one. So this, so it's two images. This one's straightforward. They won't all be as straightforward. This is an image, and the this image, the word for this begins with a C, and this is an image as well. Kind of Pictionary, yes, Picture Not Me. Picture Not Me, I'm happy to go with that. That's lovely, Picture Not Me. This is an image, and this image begins with this, okay? Separately, I mean, it happens to work out quite nicely with this one. It may be why I put it first. These are the initials of the famous actor, okay? So we've got one, we've got two, and this is the actor. Image, image, actor. Pictionary is kind of a good, yeah. Or another UK game show, Win, Lose, or Draw, which again was pretty much just Pictionary. I remember watching that a lot when I used to uh, pretend to be ill at school, with, when I was ill at school. Number two. See this, see here we go, this is a different one. So this picture begins with this, this picture begins with this, but these are the initials of the actor. Picture, picture, actor. But if you get the right word, then it'll kind of, it will make sense. If you say this out loud, you'll get this. <laughs> I've, it's, it's a lot of effort to explain it. And I'm not 100% sure how many more of these I would be able to do if people were really into it, even if people were really into it. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's fun. It's, it's fun, I think. I couldn't, well, no, it's, it's interpreting images, isn't it? I was going to say, I couldn't necessarily point to how this will improve your art, but liking this one says SJBX72, I'm very, very pleased. Thank you. Those compliments are never a bad idea. Me too. Thank you, definitely. Compliments always very, very much appreciated. Number three. <sighs> this is this. This is this, this is this, this is this. This is the person. I think it's, I think it's pretty good, but then it could be an interpretation thing, I don't know. No, let's be, gosh, not me, you're always hiding your light under a bushel. This is excellent. And if you don't get it right, it's not to do with me. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's good. That's that. Number four. Ooh. These images, my goodness. These images. That is this. That is this. The middle one. This is this. This is the person. You get it. I'm over explaining now. I'm over explaining. And then number five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. That's a pretty good picture. I mean, they're all good. Gosh. 
Don't know why I'm doing myself down so much. All excellent pictures. These are amazing, says Stephanie not DJ. Well, that's that's the kind of compliment that's really gonna really gonna get me to dig deep and try and find more of these. Because <coughs> obviously, you know, um, Giancarlo Esposito, it's going to be difficult to find a series of graphical images that could represent that name. Very Francis TB. Thank you. And that's that. If you need to see any of those again, again, please let me know in the chat. But until then, let's get on with the final musing, which is hopefully going to be quite fun, quite uh, inspiring for you. You've been nominated for Academy Award for your acting. Academy Awards in uh, exactly one week's time. Uh, in the video package announcing the nominees, what line of dialogue from your film has been chosen to demonstrate how deserving you are of this nomination? So what's your line when they say, you know, gosh, um, uh, 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 for Gladiator, Russell Crowe, and they cut to the thing, and obviously it's, I am Maximus Decimus Meridius, husband to a murdered wife, father to a murdered son, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. That's what we're looking for with this. That is what we're looking for with this, okay? What's that line of dialogue that you delivered so flawlessly in that film that caused the Academy, all of those old white fellas, to say, do you know what? Do you know what? This is one of the, you know... 15 films that we feel able to give any kind of nominations to that came out this year. We need to give SJ Beck 72 an acting nod. Yeah, we need to give Definitely Not Duda a nomination. Yeah, this is one of the five for whatever, you know, whatever gender you wish to uh, apply yourself to. You've been nominated for Academy Award for your acting in the video package announcing the nominees. What line of dialogue from your film has been chosen to demonstrate how deserving you are of this nomination? And nobody needs to see any more of those again, any of the questions again, because, again, very well drawn. Let's go back to Maine. You've survived the questions, guys. <laughs> Survive the questions. Very, very well done. Um, as as per usual, and I did set this up beforehand so we don't have any of those issues that we had a couple of weeks ago, uh, we've got a little bit of art, a little bit of art for you. Loving it, says MPF. I'm loving you, Funker. Loving you very much. Being a part of this, getting involved. Loving every minute with this damn crew. Uh, let's have some art. Let's have some bonus art. And this one is quite a short one, but I think it will uh, really inspire. It will make you say, oh, and it will make you feel better than you are right now. I don't know. That's one man's opinion. Let's have some art. If you feel like you haven't been invited to a party in too long, Sometimes you need to take matters into your own hands and invite yourself to a party by buying a ticket. But please make sure that if you do buy a ticket, buy your ticket for the right party. And I think you know which one that is. Because as we're all aware... There ain't no party like an party. Hey, There we go. Sometimes you need to invite yourself to the party. And it's, if you're going to invite yourself to a party, make sure it is an S Club party. Because uh, they are... There's no party like an S Club party. And I can attest to that. Thank you. Thank you, definitely. Appreciate that. S Club, fewer than seven. Yeah, they managed to get five out. They managed to get five out which was wonderful. Uh, we had Joe. Uh, we had Bradley. 
uh, we had Rachel, thank goodness. We had Tina. Um, we did have John, who had worked on his arms in the intervening years. Very, very big lad now. Uh, really, uh, really chiseled guns. Uh, John took us all to the gun show, uh, and we all said, thank you, John. Um, yeah, they didn't have Hannah. She uh, conscientiously objected, and Paul couldn't show up on account of him uh, having passed away last year. But um, do you know what? Five sounded just as good as seven. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it. They they dialed it up. Normally they give a hundred percent. This time they gave one hundred and twenty percent, one hundred and forty percent to make up for the two people missing. Yep, they each gave one hundred and forty percent. That's maths. That's maths off the top of my head. So <laughs> let's get on with some answers, guys. Let's get on with some answers. Let's go for number one, which was, oh, Spotlight, of course. Here we go. Here we go. The musing. The musing was one of Billie Eilish's middle names is Pirate, uh, which is both excellent and bonkers. Uh, what is your dream doesn't necessarily have to be an actual name, middle name. You just let me know. Don't let me know by shouting it out wherever you are. My gosh, what if you're watching this in a in a in a library, and everybody would get really uh, really upset, really really upset. I just need you to get it in the chat. That's all I need from you right now. Let's make it happen. Uh, question number one. Billie Eilish writes songs with her brother. What is his first name? His first name is Phineas. I don't think his name is Phineas Eilish, is it? It's Phineas O'Connell. That's it. Phineas O'Connell. Yeah, yeah. He went with the actual surname as opposed to the half. But his, one of his middle names is, well, his only middle name is Baird as well. So they've both gone Baird. But she is the only one who went pirate as well. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, well done to anybody who... Each one of these is one point. Um, if you are an old person, let's say north of 40, and you get any of these right, they are worth both a point and a crock point. Okay, so well done you if you get any of these right. Uh, number two, from February 2019 to March 2021, Billie Eilish had a very particular hair colour. What colour was it? It was, of course, green, bright green. And I would put a picture up, but um, the browser thing's being weird and I can't show you anything, which is very frustrating. Um, number three, Billie Eilish's first number one, not Lil Nas X from the top of the US Billboard chart. What was the song called? It was a song they used for the um, trailer of the DreamWorks animated picture, The Bad Guys. It was, of course, Bad Guy. I'm the bad guy. Boom, boom, doo, 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 doo. Something like that. You understand. And then the Lil Nas X, that was Old Town Road. So if you wrote Old Town Road, I'm going to give you the point for that because I'm pretty generous, all told. Number four, in earning a number one, Billie Eilish became the first person born in the 21st century to achieve the honour. What year was she born? She only just made it, only just made it, 2001. Um, she was born when uh, America was still reeling from the uh, national tragedy of 9-11. Um, I'm sure she was a ray of sunshine for her parents. Uh, number five, uh, which James Bond film did Billie Eilish write and perform a song for? It was, of course, No Time to Die. I've got no time to die. Don't ask me to die, please. I just don't have the time. Very busy. That was uh, that's, that's an inaccurate summation of the film, but um, I think it still gives you a little flavour. Um, so, again, well done if you got any of those right. Let's get on with this uh, musing. Let's see what people have gone for. What's what's a, what's a fake name? What's a fake name? Because I don't know any of your names, and you don't know my name, so we can't use those names. What's a fake name? Let's, let's go to Bing. Um, fake name generator. Let's have a look. Generate a fake name. Um, gender, let's go random. We've got Brenda McCord. It's got Brenda McCord. Nana, we are assigning you Brenda McCord. My name is Brenda Maths McCord. That's good. 
But the worry with that, of course, is that what if you're not good at maths? What if you, what if you have just been shackled um, to a millstone? It's a, it's a mixed metaphor, but I think it still works. Shackled to a millstone uh, of your greatest failing. Gosh, I wish I was good at maths, especially because my name is maths. It would be very beneficial if you were very good at maths, though. So it's kind of a it's kind of a toss up. It's like when parents call their children uh, grace or patience. You think, well, what if they're not graceful or patient? It, you're running a risk there. You're running a risk, um, but you've gone bold with it, and that's great because then if you are very good at maths, people will say, "Oh my gosh, how did you manage to work out that tip so quickly?" And you could say, "I'm Brenda McCord. Maths is my middle name." Lovely stuff. Uh, SJBEX72, let's generate a name for you. Felissa, that's not a real name. That's not a real name. Krista, what's this stuck on? Ignacio, no. Jason Ortiz, there we go. I'm Jason Isambard Ortiz. Oh, that's a classy name. That's a classy name, SJBEX72. You're, you're getting, you are getting the reservation that you need in the restaurant that you choose with a name like that. Hi, uh, looking for a table of two in the name of Isambard Ortiz. Oh, yes, sir. we have a table waiting for you, my goodness. Is it by the kitchen? Absolutely not, unless you want it to be by the kitchen because you enjoy the hustle and bustle because you've watched FX's The Bear. It's up to you, Isambard. You get to choose wherever you want to sit in the restaurant. Uh, definitely not do going uh, Benjamin Simmons. Hi, my name's Benjamin Ghostface Simmons. Oh, and they'd say, parents big fan of Scream. And you say, no, Wu-Tang Clan. I just need to double check a reference that I just made. Yep. Yep, parents big, uh... Big Wu Tang fans, big Wu Tang fans, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why they called me Benjamin Ghostface Simmons. Nana Hobbop, really getting mm, medieval, medieval there. Tracy Valencia, that's a lovely name in and of itself. Fake name generator dot com. Tracy Mithrandir Valencia. I mean, I need to bring that. I need to bring that. I wouldn't be the man that you know if I didn't. If I didn't bing that, Mithrandir is a name in Sindar in meaning the Grey Pilgrim or the Grey Wanderer. Midway through... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's, it's Gandalf Sindar in name, used in Gondor and by the elves. means Grey Pilgrim from the Sindarath myth and Ran, Grey Wander, or Randia Pilgrim. I mean, it's geeky, but that's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all, especially not for Tracy. Tracy Mithrin, dear Valencia, lovely. Uh, TB Douglas, I wish the B in my... Oh, of course we could... Yeah, uh, I wish the B in my name stood for Bartholomew. It's fancy, and I feel it would get me into some exclusive places. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it would. I think it would, T. I don't know what the T stands for, but if the B's Bartholomew... I mean, it almost it almost demands a snifter of brandy, doesn't it? It's the kind of name that... Bartholomew, oh, thank you, sir. Here's here's your brandy. And you get to swirl it. And you get to wear a suit jacket and just just keep the hand in one pocket like Prince Charles. King Charles Gosh. That's that's still difficult to, to get for get through. Aerial Time Warner official would choose John Crossfit Stallard. You'd need to have some good calves for that. You'd need to have some good calves. Chiseled from granite they'd have to be. Uh, Monkey Pixie Funk, Anthony Warrior Ballantine. <laughs> I'm, en I'm enjoying that a lot. I'm enjoying that a lot. Again, you couldn't be me. Maybe that's the thing. It would force you to not be a wallflower because you're like my middle name is Warrior. Is my middle name here? I can't. I can't just sit by the. I need to be in there. I need to be in the cut and thrust of the action. Um, Nana Hobob. Oh, that was my N reference to the S Club 5F. Oh, I see. Oh, of course, because you did. Well, I mean, 
yeah, that does make sense. That makes more sense because you did also go for Mithrin Deer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. And Super Nash Van 8 goes for Ace. Hi, my name's Randolph Ace Miller. Ace Miller. I think really good. Really, really good stuff. All round. All round, guys. Points all round. If you put a if you put a thing down, you get an extra point. What have we got? Movie ladder. The musing was very simply, and it was it's, this is quite an important one, guys. This this could this could form the crux of our um, Inglorious Bastards style revisionist history movie, where the USA drops something else on Japan, and it still ends World War Two. But uh, Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima don't have to suffer necessarily in the way that they uh, did in real life. Um, so let's 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 make a slightly happier thing, yeah, and let's get it in the chat. Let's get it in the chat. Uh, the movie ladder was this number one, nice and simple, nice and simple, because he is the only person who was in both. It is Killian Murphy, the wonderful Killian Murphy. Doing his lovely little accent in uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> lovely stuff. Uh, number two, who is in Inception and Wolf of Wall Street? It's the lead in both. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. The big man. The big man. Leo DC. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street and Barbie. She was the female lead. Female lead. In both Margot Robbie. That's right. Barbie and Anchorman 2. Barbie and Anchorman 2. Really? That's Will Ferrell. Plays the head of Mattel in Barbie. And plays uh, the Anchorman in Anchorman 2. And then Anchorman 2... Indiana Jones 4, it is, of course, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. He was the lead. He, 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 was, he, was, he was Dr. Jones. Dr. Indiana Jones. Uh, Henry, Henry, Henry Jones? His name's not Indiana Jones, is it? Henry Walton, Indiana Jones Jr. Yep, 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 yep. All good, all good. So well done if you got those ones right, guys. Well done if you got those ones right. Uh, as many people will point out, it's not easy. Uh, I think the Funkster said it is very tricky. Uh, but I, hopefully these are all big enough people that, yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get, I, yeah, yeah. I get where he's going with that. There's your answers on their own, in isolation. What a lineup. What a lineup. Um... Again, one point for each one of those that you got correct. Let's have a look at some of these musings. Let's drop something better on Japan, yeah? Let's not just go boom. Let's go for some other kind of result. AOL Time Warner official, the little, the little shoemaker. Uh, millions of origami cranes. That's lovely. That's lovely. Cause, and that's culturally respectful as well. Is it saying, hey, you guys friggin' love folding paper? <coughs> it's mostly what you do. Does the crane mean anything? Oregon crane meaning. That's good. hope and love. I mean, and also, I don't know necessarily whether this is something that they're designed to. But maybe they'd fly a little bit. You know, in the same way as a paper aeroplane. Get some of these millions says also it's a lovely way to bring the country together. Both America, because people are having to fold these friggin' things. But also Japan, because they sense that, you know, they're really, this is a country of people that are working with us. That's nice. That's nice. Significance of the origami crane in Japan. Had an ancient backstory, the paper bird was later popularized after one girl named Sadako Sasaki used it to send a powerful and lasting message. Today, people continue to make and gift origami cranes as symbols of hope and love. The Orizuru. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. 
That's, it's it kicked off in a very earnest way. Yeah, well, Time Warner official. I respect that. Definitely not, Tudor. A little bit more Route 1 here. Candy. Who can be still in a war frame of mind if you've just had lots of candy dropped on you? And lots of exotic candy as well. Because if it's coming from America it's in 1945, you're thinking, gosh, this is... What is this stuff? What is this stuff? We have our Japanese candy. It's made of strawberries and, you know, lots of weird Kit Kats and stuff. But American stuff? You could do the Skittles thing, taste the rainbow, but it's real. But if that's if a Skittles dropped out of an aeroplane and it hit somebody on the head, is that going straight through their skull? Is that treating their skull like um, a bullet through a raindrop? You know? <clears throat> maybe. That would be my concern. So maybe we're having to go with slightly softer candy. A bit of nougat. Some cotton candy. Candy floss. Maybe that's maybe that's going to work. Candy floss would be really good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sweetness. It's happiness. Everybody's in a better mood when they've had some candy. And then also, if they are getting ready for a big assault on the US, I'm thinking Pearl Harbor, when you've had too much candy, you're like, can I just have a nap for just like four to six hours? And then I'm just going to be feeling right as really. I just I just need to sl slow down. I'm going to be hyper, going to be well up for it. Let's bomb the Americans. But then as time goes on, I'm going to hit that sugar crash. And then it's, you know, and then after that sugar crash, you just think, do I, do I really still want to do that? I, don't know. I thought I wanted to do it. It's the same thing as like writing a letter, and putting it in it putting it in your desk drawer rather than sending it and the next day you think yeah shit. maybe let's not bomb america maybe let's not do that that's a nice idea that's a nice idea are we doing an ad break are we uh let's snooze it let's snooze it uh color run style packets of colored dye would make everything look lovely and it would take them so long to sweep up they wouldn't have any time for hostilities super nash Wendy, i like that you've thought this through i think this is this is this is this is kind of an intellectual choice color run style packets of colored dye so it's like it's turning their country Hiroshima and Nagasaki, if they were still the targets, into just a happy day glow wonderland. Everyone's feeling better. Everyone's feeling pretty jazzy. And also, as a practical consideration, they're going to have to sweep this up. They're going to have to sweep this up. Obviously, and they, you know, as we've learned from their sand zen gardens, they are quite slow with a broom. Yeah? If it's the same with a broom as with a rake, it's going to take them some time, yeah? It's going to get into some lovely patterns, but it's going to take them a while. That's a great... Again, using cultural knowledge, like I say, that's an intellectual choice. Wonderful. TB Douglas. <coughs> Here we go. Kind of like the candy one, but lighter. Marshmallows. Lovely. Light, fluffy, colourful. Gives a little bit of sugar for a dopamine hit. Dopamine. That's what we're looking for. The Japanese nation on dopamine, they're not going to be angry, Yeah? They're not going to be kicking off at the... Hirohito is going to be, hey, we need to have a marshmallow. Calm down, Jesus. Sometimes I'm grumpy until I have a snack. Maybe they were just feeling a bit low on sugar, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I like that. Feeling a little bit low on sugar. And the Americans come in that way. You know, I love Americans. I, you know, I live in this country. But can be a little bit abrasive, yeah. Sometimes that tone of voice... Or it gets really far in the back of the throat and it really travels. It's a type of voice that really travels. And sometimes if you've not had enough sleep or enough food. Or maybe you've drunk three beers the night before instead of your usual two. <coughs> then it can really attack the ears. In all you know, with all due respect, absolutely get on board with that. Wouldn't have time for hostilities, feeling a bit low on sugar. These are all good options. Uh, Nana Hobbop, a Pepsi drop ordered 
by a time-travelling Kendall Jenner. That's what these guys needed. That's what these guys needed. They're getting ready. They're loading up in their bombers. Giving their guys the guns. Come on, guys. We're Japan, yeah? We need to pull together, yeah? We're only a very small island nation of only... Hundred twenty five million, yeah. A third a third of what America is. So it's gonna be a tough job at the best of times. But I think we can do it. Yeah, we're Japanese, we're very resourceful, very hard working, we're innovators. We are innovators. So we just need to, to uh, and we've got that conviction, yeah? We've got that conviction, we've got that sense of innovation, we've got the Who's that tall? Very attractive lady. Is she wearing makeup? I didn't, uh, hello, can we help? Can we help you? What? What do you? Do, how do you get onto this base? This is this is top seat. What? What are you doing? What? What's this? What's this? Pepsi. Do you Do you guys know what what, is, what is this is? It's a can. It's a drink. Is this a drink? Is this a drink? No more war. <laughs> Did you feel that? That's the power of Pepsi, guys. That's the power of Pepsi. And that's the power of Kendall Jenner. That's the power of Kendall Jenner. Wonderful stuff, Nana. It gives it a, a slightly sci-fi fantasy twist. And I, I really like that. I really like that. Monkey Pixie Funk. Here we go. Clones of Nicolas Cage. They would parachute en masse, all simultaneously acting the blank out and sending the watching throngs with awe, disbelief, surrender, maybe the feeling that they are living through the greatest and simultaneously worst moments of their lives. Missed out the word wild in the hastily typed paragraph above. If you're telling me that World War II and Japan's involvement therein could have been stopped with a slight application of nouveau shamanic acting, then I'm going to put a hat on. I don't have a hat. I don't have a hat. I don't have a hat here. I'm going to put a hat on. And I'm going to take it off to you, Funker. That's exactly the kind of thinking that America needed. Guys, points all round. That was that was that was really impressive. That was really really nice. Uh, and then finally, we have our iconic art. We're gonna. I'm gonna. There's this ad that's been uh, threatening for a while, so we're gonna. We'll, we'll do an ad before we go through the answers to this. My God, what a world! What a world this is! What a what a bunch of suggestions this is that we've had. Some concepts that. Uh, I gotta say, guys, I really wasn't expecting today. I really wasn't expecting today. The musing, of course, the musing, the final musing of the week. You've been nominated for an Academy Award for your acting, and in the video package announcing the nominees, what line of dialogue from your film has been chosen to demonstrate how flippin' deserving you are? You deserve this, guys. You've put in the hard work, and now you're seeing your just, re just rewards. How deserving you are of this nomination. Best actor, best actress. Could be supporting. I'm I'm certainly not opposed to that. Just get it in the chat, yeah? <coughs> get it in the chat. Your community is back. Let's get it in the chat, guys. Let's get it in the chat. Your answers to the final musing. And let's get through some of these questions, yeah? Wait, what's the... There's the thing. I don't know where the thing would be. Okay, so this is a person. They're wearing something around their neck. It's a cross. That means this person is a K Christian. This is some hay. It's been um, tied up with some stuff. And it's it's all in a bale. It's Christian bale. There he is. There he is. There's Christian Bale. 
Okay. Do you understand it now? You do understand it now. That's good. That's good. Uh, number two. <clears throat> this big uh, big hat. What are they called? Is that called a talk or a toque? Big chef's hat. Chef trousers. One of those like button up the side things that Gordon Ramsay's always taking off on uh, Kitchen Nightmares because he loves to change his shirt. That means this person is a chef. That's a C. This is a lovely rendering of a bridge here over some water. But wait, there's two of them. That's not just one bridge. That's two bridges. Chef Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Yeah? There we go. Chef Bridges. It works when you say it out loud. So let's not have any of that talk in there. Here we go. Here's, here's where it hits fifth gear. We're going to leave that one. This this person, walking stick or cane, holding their hip, some hip pain, could be injured, but oh, more generally, it's old. This is this is an old person. This is a small person. Could be a dwarf. That doesn't start with a K. Could be a, a little person. That doesn't start with a K. What does start with a K is child. It's a kid. And then this person is wearing trousers and uh, a long sleeve top. And in, in a right and just world, only men should wear them. Old kid man. Well, this, this is obviously a shaving situation. Shaving all the stubble. There's cut. Oh, cut, cut, cut. Begin with N? No, no. It's a they, they've just nicked themselves. They've just nicked it's a small cut. They've just nicked themselves. So it's a nick old kid man. It is, of course, Nicole Kidman. Nick old kid man. Nick old kid man. Number four. This Last one, K, leg. No, but it's, it's, we seem to be focused on this part. It's a knee. It's a knee. What's this? It's an eye looking through a magnifying glass at some kind of fluid. I don't know. Let's not think too much about that. But what is that? If somebody's looking through a magnifying glass, who looks through a magnifying glass? A detective. What do they look for? Clues. And this is like some mountains and a river. But there's a there's a gap in between where the river's coming through, which makes this a gorge. This is a gorge. Gorge, clue, knee, George Clooney. Yeah? It all it makes sense when you say it out loud. So yeah. And then finally, lovely big wings, praying, all good, serene probably blonde, angel, yeah? Big mouth Billy Bass. Big, big, big mouth. It's just a bass, just a bass probably. And what's this person doing? They are sitting. Angel Bassett, Angel Bassett. Angela Bassett. So... I hope everybody's still enjoying that round because so it got some really good response as we we're going through. Hopefully that that's, uh, that's that's continued. SJ Beck seventy two, <sighs> lovely. From I don't know. Let's make up a name for the film. From uh, Brutal Encounter, SJ Beck seventy two. Hey, welcome to the party, pal. Oh no, it need to be more dramatic than that, wouldn't it? Okay, so. Uh, maybe it's a film about somebody who they just want to go to this party. They oh, they're desperate to go to this party. Really keen to go to this party. It's their life's wish. And so you go on a road trip to get them to the party. But unfortunately, on the way. Because it's an Oscar film and they have to be very sad. The person dies. And so, but you, they say, do you know what? No, we're still going to take this dead person, this corpse, to the party. Corpse at the party, it could be called. 
And so it's just this heartbreaking, oh. It's not the final scene because there's this other stuff, there's a bit, bit of an epilogue, but your, your, your big scene that you're building towards. <coughs> and they drag this corpse into, maybe they've put it in a big duffel bag or something. They unzip the duffel bag and everybody's there, the party. It's amazing. Beautiful people all around wearing really fancy clothes. Cheese cheese fountain, chocolate fountain, guacamole fountain, caramel fountain, just all fountains. And you can just put whatever you want in. Sausage in the caramel, it's a great party. You can do whatever you want. They unzip it and it's just, Ugh. and SJ Beck 72 steps up and says, hey, Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> Not a dry eye in the house. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. I, I think you've got a good chance at winning this, SJ Bex, only two. Definitely not, dude. I told you what would happen. You just didn't listen. Oh, definitely. If that's not a revenge thriller, I don't know what is. I mean, it's not typically Oscar fodder. But the performances and the direction and some really interesting sound design, actually, really, really quite innovative. And it's just, this is just to kick off the big final fight scene. Just killing it. Absolutely killing it. With like a baseball bat with some nails smashed in the top. Kicks in the door. Oh my God. It's, it's whoever the is the character's name what the hell are you doing here I told you what would happen you just didn't listen and then turns the light off you're like oh my god what's going on and it and then sets <laughs> sets the baseball bat on fire so that's all <laughs> just crushing skulls oh I want to see that film definitely I want to see it the funker he was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's 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 so maybe that's like the sequel to Madam Web. It's Madam Web two. Uh World Wide Web. Yeah. Madam Web two, World Wide Web. And then it's it's a callback to the first film. But it's not the same guy, it's an it's a separate guy. Maybe the bank person who is bankrolling expedition in the amazon when she was researching spiders just before she died yeah and that's what and again that shows the power of the funkers performance because this is really just a kind of expositional line there's no emotion behind that but it's like it's just done with in such a way that the academy just says oh brava brava fabulous fabulous stuff aol time warner official it's a disc we send out to every household in America and we charge them $9.99 a month to access the World Wide Web. It cannot fail. Oh, that's it's heart, that's heartbreaking, AOL Time Warner official. That's heartbreaking. Because it's dramatic irony. It's the dramatic irony that's just pregnant in that whole thing. And it's just very bright. Hey, hey, yeah, 90s. Double-breasted. Yeah, hey, God, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah high top sneakers whatever it's a disc we send out to every household in america we charge them nine dollars and 99 cents a month for access to the world wide web it cannot fail was like, oh my god yeah that was actually that was actually a really good performance from Airline Time Warner official. I was actually re I wasn't expecting it from that film, but it was really good actually. Uh, Super Nash One Eight. Oh my god, it's only got one wheel down. Oh, lovely, lovely. So it's the latest Transformers film. Transformers. What the hell was that? Did you see that? A big thumbs up thing? Or am I going mad? Did you see that? What's, what's going on? <laughs> what? 
We saw it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's creeped me out. I just, how dare I have something happen on my stream that I didn't authorize or create? We saw it too. <laughs> it's a transformer. It's only got one wheel down. Maybe just. No, it doesn't seem to be working, TB, but it's a great theory, my god. So yeah, Super Nash 8, Transformers 7, um, Steel Love, maybe it's a rom-com, and one of the guys is coming in, and he's got wheels instead of feet. Difficult to replicate. Yeah, very difficult. I don't know what's going on with it. And the transformer, it's although it's it's a little bit unfortunate for you, for you to be saying it's. It's like these are these are people, yeah. We've learned that over six films of Transformers, yeah. They're people. They've got emotions. They feel anger, and um, it's mostly anger. It's mostly anger. But it's a, an achievement to get Oscar nominated for a Transformers film. And then finally, we've got uh, Nana Hobob. Your heart might be as cold as this glacier that the racetrack is on. Ooh. But it'll melt when we start to burn rubber. Ouch. Because this is Hot Wheels, baby. Your heart will melt. Hopefully not the glacier. The Hot Wheels movie. Mattel. The head of Mattel. Will Ferrell. I assume. Get that in the film. Your heart might be as cold as this glacier that the racetrack is on, but it'll melt when we start to burn rubber. Because this is Hot Wheels, baby. Your heart will melt. Hopefully not the glacier. And you're like, oh, it's on. It's on. Glacier. Oh, very, very exciting. Um, Points all round, points all round, points all round. Woof. Let's get back to Maine. What a time. What a time it's been. TB Douglas. Reddit says, was the streamer a Mac user? Newest OS update added this gesture recognition on your webcam that adds a big thumbs up when you give a thumbs up. Tell them to give two thumbs down. It will blow their mind. You you twisted my leg here, TB. What world is this? What? Incredible, incredible, guys. We've we've only got two. <laughs> I know, definitely not due to I second that. We've got, we've got. Two more points to get, guys. Minute to win it. Minute to win it. It is the most exciting minute in quiz shows today. I mean, I give you, I've got something on my light box. This is a, a live feed of the light box, just with kind of noodled around with the exposure a little bit. You need to connect with me, with my mind. You're all fuzzy for me now. Oh, am I? Come on. Yeah. 
Let's see. Let's see. You don't need to be seeing me. You just need to be feeling me, TB. Okay? Not sure if that's just me. It looks all right on my screen. But, you know, I'm an optimist. So very excitingly, one of my projects in the two weeks off um, that I took uh, a few weeks ago um, is I finally worked out how to stream video games. And so in the coming weeks, I'm currently coming up with a... a, a uh, I'm working with uh, working with a very talented artist to to come up with some cool stuff for the opening titles. But I will be streaming video games, which I'm very excited about. I uh, it allows me to take video games and do it in a slightly different way. You know, a lot of people will just play video games on Twitch. I'm going to give you something a little bit extra, a little bit different, a little bit wild, a little bit twisted. But in honor of that, in honor of that, I need you to tell me which video game is on my light box. Let's get the countdown. You've got a minute to win it, guys. Let's get two more points. Mario says Nano Hop Up. A great, great start. <clears throat> Donkey Kong, lovely. Super Mario, Goldeneye. This is great, this is great. Lemming says the Funkster. Mario Kart, nice. Red Dead Redemption, lovely. Zelda Final Fantasy. I like this. This let's 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 look across the the, the width and breadth of uh, of video games. It could be something that came out last week. It could be something that came out in 1983. Whatever you want. Zelda Final Fantasy 4, Fortnite, Pac-Man: The Final Fight, Final Fantasy 3. Keep on going. Hey, well, Time Warner. You can do it. Lovely. Speedball 2. Blogger, Final Fantasy VI, Rocket League, lovely stuff. James Pond, wonderful. Pac-Man, Pong. Ten seconds left, guys. Ten seconds left. Let's get in our final, final, final guesses. Final Fantasy IX. I really respect the work you're putting in here, AOL Time Warner official. <coughs> Last few dribbling in. Little Big Planet, great, a lot of great games here. A lot of great games here. Stardew Valley, ooh. Maybe I will be streaming that, who knows? Who knows? Let's get rid of that topic. Banjo-Kazooie. Well, very excitingly, I always say, it only... Um, it only means as much as it does because sometimes nobody gets it. It's Space Invaders, guys. It was a classic and nobody went for it. It was a classic and nobody went for it. I didn't think anybody went for it. Let's double check. Nobody went for it. Nobody went for it. Nobody went for it. Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. Ooh, so it's definitely not due to absolutely. I agree with you on that. Ooh. Space Invaders. A great video game. A great Bag of crisps. Denied, says Monkey Pixie Funk. Absolutely. That's fine, though, guys. That's fine, though. If every, somebody got it every single week, it wouldn't mean as much when they did. Let's go back to me. Let's go back to me. So, guys, whilst you are totting up your scores and getting them into the chat, I want to remind you that in this quiz, you're only competing against yourself. There is no point threshold to being smart. If you've got all the questions right that you realistically could have been expected to get, then you are smart. Art doesn't become successful because of the opinions of others or of box office numbers. Art becomes successful when you say, yeah, baby, that's great. And if you think your performance today was great, then it was great. No two ways about it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, not live, make sure you write down your score and your musing answers in the comments below because I would love to hear how you did. Although that's something that may be changed. I may be going back to streaming on YouTube as well. Twitch changed their rules. So I think I'm going to be trying to work out how to do that again. Um, obviously, I did it before, but gosh, it was a while ago. Space Invader. Firing up and firing up and trying to get that UFO. Wonderful game. Wonderful game. 12 points for me today. Love the Iconic Art round. Thank you, thank you. TB Douglas, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. 
Uh, and well done you for the 12 points. SJ Beck 72 with the 12 points. Everybody's knocking out a 12 pointer today. Everybody with a little does, a little cheeky does. Uh, 12 for me, 17 for definitely not due to striding in as ever with those big punky boots and crushing everybody's dreams. Uh, well done you, Monkey Pixie Funk with 11, well done you. Another 12 for Nana Hobob and 14 for AOL Time Warner Official, well done you. I knew more about the Billie Eilish than I thought. It, that may have been, I mean we got some, some groans of uh, protestation earlier, so that may have been the thing that took you over the edge. Um, and uh, respect to you, respect to you definitely uh, which means that once again, once again it is the song that we never get tired of playing the song entitled Definitely Not Duda was a high point score lovely TB, well done Definitely Not Duda congratulations, congratulations here is some faces and uh, and some other things well done you, Definitely Not Duda well guys Thank you so, so much for joining me. We are a little bit over. I do apologize about that. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you felt creative all at the same time. I am not me. I am Art. I hope you'll join me next time. Same time, same place. Although the next quiz will be probably like three weeks time because we'll do an Art right now next week and then we'll take a week off uh, just to kind of allow the ground to get a bit fallow. Just allow you to miss me a little bit uh, and then we'll come back with another quiz. Um, so at that point you'll have another opportunity to improve your art and say to yourself, yeah, I am smart. Let's get, let's get some of these. Let's get some of these in there. Oh, exceeded character limit of 500. Well, let's get rid of those and those then. Oh, really? I can't. There we go. Thank you so much, guys. Have a lovely, creative week. My God, please be creative. And I'll see you next time for art right now. Uh, can we name other dogs soon? Yes, and get an emote going. Yes, that's a very good point, actually, TB. I, I have let the new dog naming thing slide. We'll, we'll have a few more. Tell you what, we'll have a few more videos um, this week. Uh, and then we'll do a, we'll do a big, um, we'll do a final uh collating of our names f on the show next week uh, and then we'll get on with some um get on with some instagram polls and name name that little uh, that little fella yeah good reminder but yes you are smart guys and i'll see you next time goodbye so there we go and well done you whatever your score might be I definitely think that you are smart, though Rob's not as smart as me. Your art will be better, trust me on this, should be nothing short of sublime. That's why you learn, and don't stop now, I'll see you right here next time. I am smart, 